All right, you got what you wanted. Guys, after numerous requests, finally, Pure Passage offers Hajj. Experience the divine journey of Hajj, the most significant act of worship in Islam, performed on behalf of your loved ones by Pure Passage. Hajj is not only a spiritual obligation for every Muslim, but also a symbol of unity, peace and submission to Allah's will. Our devoted team of experienced sheikhs and students of knowledge will take on this holy pilgrimage on behalf of your family members who are unable to undertake this once-in-a-lifetime journey. Our exclusive Hajj package includes the performance of the Hajj rituals, a detailed video report of the journey and a commemorative certificate marking the completion of this spiritual obligation. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Let our team take on this journey for you while honoring their legacy and providing you with peace of mind. Join us in the spiritual journey and leave a legacy that will last for eternity. Be'ith me love. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, absolutely fascinating video today. We're going to react to Muslim millionaires made a lot of money doing this one trick by the channel IFG. As you can see, the thumbnail promotes this video as the Islamic wealth secret. And why this is so fascinating to me personally is because lately we've seen many famous people such as Andrew Tate reverting to Islam. Through such personalities, we've seen a merge of different topics on social media. People started talking about hustling, making money, red pill, and of course, Islam. All of those topics crossed paths on social media. And this is why I'm extremely curious to react to today's video because it merges finance and Islam. With no further ado, let's have a look. Islam has flourished for 1400 years now and throughout that time a small group of practicing Muslims have become incredibly wealthy by following one little known and very counterintuitive secret. Just Many of these people did not even intend to get wealthy and it simply fell into their lap. In this video I'll explain what this strategy is, give five real life examples of this strategy working and outline how you can get started with this strategy today. Let's go! Abdul Rahman ibn Auf is one of the 10 promised Jannah by the Prophet and one of his many characteristics was his generosity. Talha radiallahu anhu used to say that all of the people in Medina were living off Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. He said that one third of them had debts which Abdul Rahman ibn Auf had paid on their behalf, one third of them had taken loans from him that he never requested repayment on, and one third had received direct sadaqah from him. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Now, why am I sharing this? It's because Abdul Rahman ibn Auf was a prominent beneficiary of the secret that we want to share with you today, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises to multiply our wealth many fold when we donate. He says in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah sure. verse 245, who is it that would loan Allah a goodly loan so he may multiply it for him many times over? He also says in Surah Al-Anfal in verse 60, Whatever ye shall spend in the cause of Allah shall be repaid unto you and ye shall not be treated unjustly. We can look at this phenomenon not only from a religious perspective but from a psychological perspective as well because if you give to charity, you give your money away so to speak, it brings you into a mindset of abundance because it means you know internally I'm going to give this money away and God will repay me anyways. That means that you're not attached to that money anymore. You can see this beautiful described in books such as Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you keep on repeating the mantra, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough money, you bring yourself in a poor state of mind. You bring yourself into a needy state of mind. The same applies to anything in life. I mentioned red pill in the beginning of the video. Of course, I'm not for red pill. However, when I was younger, yes, I was in the pickup scene as well. This is how we used to call it back in the day. And when you were approaching women, you had to come from a state of abundance because women can feel when you are 
are needy. You will never attract a woman when you are needy. However, when your cup is full, so to speak, the women come naturally. And the same applies for anything in life. When you talk to people that have an abundance of money, those people do not worry about money. I heard the funniest thing once. The poor guy says, oh, I have money problems. So the rich guy asks him, how much money do you got? The poor guy answers, I have no money. So the rich guy answers again and says, then you don't have any money problems. Which yet again can be translated into anything. If you don't have a woman, if you don't have a wife, you don't have any women problems. If you don't have any money, you don't have any money problems. However, what you have is a poverty mindset. And this is why this is so extremely powerful. If you look at it just psychologically, you're giving away your money knowing it will return. This puts you into abundance. The Prophet also said, whoever facilitates facilitates the affairs of a person in distress, Allah the Almighty will facilitate his affairs in this world and in the hereafter. He also famously said you that charity does not in any way decrease wealth. But oftentimes we hear these teachings and we think, ah, that's a nice reminder. We shrug our shoulders and we carry on. But there are certain people in our community who take this to heart and run with it. Their economic outcomes have been spectacular. And I'm going to share some examples with you now. Up first, I have an example from Ibrahim. So I donated an amount that felt large to me about a few months ago, and I wasn't sure if I'd gone too far. But then within the next week, I found that unexpectedly, we had this investment of over £500,000 that was made on the platform. And then a few weeks later, I donated, you know, I think it was about £100. And the next day, I got an unexpected £10,000 windfall from HMRC. So thank you Allah, thank you HMRC. Next, we have a rather funny one for those of you who love to travel but can't afford it from Iqbal Naseem. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, when I was in my investment banking career and I had made the uh, intention to leave and to give it all up and to sacrifice uh, a lot of money uh, to go on a better path uh, to to serve uh, God's cause and to, to do something more meaningful and uh, I suppose, faithful with my life. I remember thinking that um, I'd never end up uh, going on luxury ho holidays again or to nice places again. So in my budgeting for the future, um, I had to kind of cut out all the stuff that I'd been used to. And I, and I remember just thinking to myself, you know what, I'm just going to give up on the idea that I'm actually going to be able to travel much or at all uh, on, on what will be probably a very low compensation compared to what I've been used to. But in the 10 years since, uh, Allah has taken me to dozens of different countries, amazing trips, lots of travel. Um, and so it just shows he provides from where you just don't expect. Here's a really powerful story from Tufail over at Islamic Relief, where the return was almost immediate. In 2010, I was presenting a live appeal on Islam Channel, and we were raising funds for Pakistan, which had been devastated by floods. A brother called in and immediately became emotional shared with us a story that for years he'd been working to save enough money to go to Hajj. He'd struggled, but had just met his target, alhamdulillah, and was about to book his ticket. But then when he witnessed the suffering of his brothers and sisters in Pakistan, he felt compelled to do something about that and instead donated, decided to donate every penny towards our Pakistan appeal. I mean, subhanAllah, there were takbeers, Allahu Akbar. It was so emotional. Two or three calls later, a travel agent called in and said that he wanted to be connected to that brother because he was willing to take him to Hajj, all expenses paid. Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. It reminded us of the, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he said that if you give up something for Almighty Allah, Allah will replace it with something better. In that moment, that hadith came to life. And it was inspirational, subhanAllah. Here's another wow. incredible story of continued donation, which really adds awesome up over video. time. This time, it just shows what happens when you put all your faith to God, nothing else. Yet again, this, of course, what Islam teaches: pure tawhid. We only rely on Allah and nobody else. This is why this financial principle here is so powerful, because it is grounded in tawhid. It is grounded in Islam. It is grounded in submission to God. You are trusting God 
God's plan 100%. You are submitting yourself to God and you do good in God's name. You give to charity, you give to people in need and you know in your heart that Allah will provide. This is truly inspirational as he said and we should all be reminded to give to charity. To give just an example of a, a family run business from Birmingham who have much and over the years continued to give thousands upon thousands of, of pounds. And I remember that, you know, I'd come, come and see them in, in, in Ramadan and I would certainly ask them, you know, from the, uh, you know, the donations you've been giving and they seem to be increasing every year. Do you, do you, how, how is the business going? Are you finding, you know, like, like I'm kind of getting at the fact, are you finding some sort of, you know, decrease in the amounts or, uh, or how it is? And they said, Alhamdulillah, every single year they see an increase. And I find that really remarkable, especially is there zakat, which is on the increase. Um, and what's beautiful about the word zakah is that no doubt it has the meaning of purification, but it also has the meaning of nama, which is increase and in growth. So uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless I all our donors uh, who continue to give staggering amounts of donations. May Allah give them more in return. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. What incredible stories, mashallah. We interact with, alhamdulillah, very affluent folks as part of our work with Curate Capital, and we consistently hear stories like this. One of our investors, for example, was sat on a large amount of money of uninvested cash and had a large zakat bill. He gritted his teeth and donated and then miraculously found that the exact amount of zakat he had given had come back to him in the form of a currency exchange fluctuation. Folks, usually with investment strategies that we discuss on YouTube and other videos discuss, you'll always see a caveat your capital is at risk and past returns are no indication of future returns. But Alhamdulillah here, there is no such caveat to give. Allah's promise is true. <laughs> and as Muslims, we hold to this sincerely. Yes, Getting started is simple. <laughs> Just donate, pay your zakat, pay your sadaqah, give charity, find good charities to give to and good opportunities and sincere opportunities to give to and most importantly have a sincere intention and, and this is exactly what i talked about in previous videos as well think about this the ummah is strong because who do you give charity to of course muslim organizations like this your money is not lost not even in this physical world because it goes to muslim brothers and sisters like this you're creating a strong ummah the other communities are not doing this if you look at the liberals or if you look at christians they're not doing this only and credit where credit is due the jews do the exact same thing. They're supporting their own communities. This is a recipe for success. Occasions like the last 10 nights of Ramadan are amazing opportunities to really double up our efforts in the hope of searching for Laylatul Qadr. So how much is too much charity? Well, the Prophet ﷺ said that the best of charity is the charity which you practice while you are healthy, penny counting and afraid of poverty and wish to become wealthy. So you should give just until that point where you feel like you might have gone a little bit too far. That's the peak of charitable giving. And as I mentioned, it's really important to keep your intention pure. Give purely for the sake of Allah, not because you want to return. But saying that the promise of Allah is true and the return will come either in this life or the next. And in fact, the next is probably preferable. And if you're looking to calculate your zakat... Absolutely, because this can obstruct your mind as well. If you only think about your return, you stop thinking about the poor people in need. They should be the focus, of course. And give to high impact charities, then I highly recommend our zakat calculator. It is the best calculator out there, in my opinion, to deal with the various types of investment classes. And also we don't charge any fees at any point in the journey. It is our annual community project. I say all of this as a reminder to myself, first and foremost, may Allah accept all of our efforts and a special request from all of us at IFG to keep us in your du'as during these precious days and nights. I'm going to be looking out in the comments for any stories that you've got about the unexpected benefits of giving in charity. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. All right, guys, and this is already it for today's video. I'm sure this was very unexpected, especially for non-Muslims watching, because people cannot fathom the principle of giving money away to make more money. But as I said, you don't have to look at this only from a religious perspective, but from a psychological perspective as well. If you look at rich, successful people, what do they say? The claim is you have to spend money to make money. How can that be? The poor person cannot understand this principle whatsoever. 
forever as long as they are in poverty mindset. How can I spend more money? I don't have any money. And this is a vicious cycle, a downward spiral. Look at what Elon Musk says, for example. Making an extra 10k is easier than trying to save 10k. The sooner you understand that, the sooner your life will improve. I am 100% convinced that the majority of people reading this quote cannot fathom what just happened. 10k? Saving 10k? I don't even make 10k. Yes, and that's exactly the problem. This yet again, poverty mindset. People are so limited, they can't even believe, imagine that they would be in a position where they can make 10k. 10k seems so grand. And I'm speaking out of experience here, of course. When I was in my early 20s, 10k, man, that was like a million. I could never imagine making such money. But you have to let go of this absolute limitation in your mind. Anything is possible and it all starts when you're not attached to it anymore. God will reward you when you don't need it anymore. This is truly a secret in life. Really try to observe your life. You as well got something when you didn't need it anymore. It always comes when you're not thinking about it anymore. It comes when you have a lack of attachment and you're full of abundance. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.